So today we start Joshua. And for us, Joshua is a book of promise and purpose. Verse 1 is being very clear about what's going on. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant. Seems like a common phrase. It's, it's just stating facts, right? After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant. But there's a lot going on underneath. You see, Moses is the one who led them out of slavery. Moses was the one who had that staff. He turned the water into blood. He was Charlton Heston. <laughs> he led them through the wilderness for 40 years. You see, Moses was the constant in their presence that, that was for them bringing God's presence. Remember, he stepped up on the mountain. His face was so changed, he had to cover it. And Joshua chapter 1 begins, after the death of Moses, the Lord's servant. Put yourself in the place of the Israelites now. Imagine how they are feeling. Moses is dead. There's fear. What's going to happen now? There's anxiety. Oh no, what's the future going to look like? There's transition. Who's in charge? Oh no, Aldersgate. Can you identify? <laughs> After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, and then the scripture goes on, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, see, God doesn't play, right? Right there. Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come. And then God goes in, into giving Joshua and the people of Israel instructions. You see, God's being very clear. While the people are in transition and there may be feelings of anxiety and fear and questioning and anger, God says, therefore, the time has come. I know a little bit of what you've been through. I am enjoying hearing your stories and listening and getting to know you. And I know it's been a rough couple of years. And yet, therefore, the time has come. Today, Aldersgate, we begin a new journey. A new journey. Therefore, the time has come. So this book that we're going to be reading through every day for the next six weeks is called Joshua. It's the book of Joshua. It begins a new chapter. They're now out of the Torah, the first five books, and they're in Joshua. But that's kind of a misnomer. Because while it's named after Joshua, Moses' assistant, this is a book about God. Moses is dead, the Lord says. Therefore, the time has come. And then God gives four promises to the people of Israel and to us. He, God says, you will be given the land. God says, no one will stand against you. God says, I will be with you. And then the final promise, I will not fail or abandon you, the Lord says. 
Joshua, and then later in chapter 1, the people of Israel are told to be strong and courageous. And yet, even before that, they are given the promise that God is in charge. God is the one doing all the work. This may be named after Joshua, but this is a book about God and the people of God that we call today Aldersgate. God is always with us. The Lord is in charge. What struck me this morning was the scripture, uh, I was listening it again to Alexa, um, and the, the Lord says, I will not fail or abandon you. Imagine that. Embrace that scripture. God says, I will never fail or abandon you. And as we start our life together, we stand in the very presence of God. God has been with you through 33 years and nine months of life, Alders Gates. God has been with you as you worshiped in the living room of the parsonage. God was with you in wonderful Wanda's. Now, let's, let's just, if you have not, if you're new to Aldersgate and you're not familiar, but you're of a certain age, say Generation X, Wonderful Wanda's has an entirely different meaning <laughs> than the start of Aldersgate Church. Come on now. We have all seen the bathroom of Wonderful Wanda's and the dance. <laughs> right? Well. And yet, if God can take a place called Wonderful Wanda's, known for a lot of things, <laughs> and create a church with a 34-year history, create a church where beer and the pool were cool all at the same time, What in the world can God do? God was with you when you worshiped in those ugly blue chairs. God was with you when you took out a $2 million loan to build this place. As I look at the financial secretary and say, what? You see, God has always been with Aldersgate Church. And God has been with you through the difficult times of the last few years. God was with you through COVID. God was with you through staff changes. God is with you through whatever pastor stands up here. And now God is again with us. As we begin a new journey, therefore, God says, this is not a hope. This is a promise. You see, in our world, the use of the English word hope is something you hope for, right? Like, I hope it is going to be hot and sunny tomorrow. And you don't know. But hope in God's scripture is a certainty and a promise. I will not fail or abandon you. I will be with you, God says. And as God said it thousands of years ago of the people of Israel standing on the banks of that raging creek, the River Jordan, God says the same thing to us this morning. Be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate them to the right or to the left. Then 
you'll be successful in everything you do. You see, there's the key. There's the gift of God even in that. Our response to God's gracious gift is to be strong and courageous. And there's a sense of encouragement. Do not be discouraged, God says. Be encouraged. Live in that hope of the promise. Walk with certainty and an encouraging spirit knowing that God goes with you before and behind, that God is the one leading us. God led with Aldersgate through Pastor Mark and Troy and Jan and Tom and Hannah, and now this is our next step together. And so God calls us to be strong and courageous and to go. See, God is giving them the command, and from here, the rest of the book will be about how they go into the land that God gave and how they live out God's commands. Because following Jesus is not just about sitting here once a week. It's about going and claiming the land. We have been given this precious piece of land. We have been given the green. We have been given those awesome blue chairs. (laughs) And Aldersgate, you have changed and claimed the land before you. You know, when there was wonderful Wanda's, you know, I grew up around here, and the only reason we East Shore people traveled, especially as teenagers, to the West Shore was because of the Hamden Movie Theater, when it was actually a movie theater down there. Only reason we came over. And then our parents said, please, cross back over quickly. (laughs) But there was nothing else around here back then. And you claimed the land that God gave you, and you changed this land. So much so that right around the corner, there's a circle named after you. And now, we're simply called to claim our land again. To reach, I hear that you say, to reach with the heart of Christ for the lives in our community. That is our land. Amen. That doesn't matter whether it is up or not. We are the people of God living out God's vision for Aldersgate Church. And we will change the world around us. And God's final command this morning, here is where you can take it into your life this week because we're starting with the promise. God says, obey all the instructions. Do not deviate to the right or to the left. There's our first step in faith with Joshua, to be strong and courageous, and you say as a part of our discipleship plan, to nurture our faith. That's our first step, to obey all the instructions that God has given. And so this week, our first step together is to embrace and to nurture our faith. And so how will you do that? What is one thing you will do? Maybe Alexa, a day. Or actually old school and, you know, put it in the book. Maybe it's joining a small group to get to know more people of faith to help nurture you on our journey together. Maybe it's joining into a ministry in some way to gather with others to claim the land.
be strong and courageous. God says, I will not fail or abandon you. And so today we go and we obey.